friends, my name is Sarah and today we are talking about The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is an adult World War II historical fiction novel that follows two sisters living in Nazi-occupied France. One sister goes to join the French resistance and the other decides to stay in her home and live in a Nazi-occupied town and then when a Nazi is billeted at her home she has to choose to live with the enemy or lose everything that she's ever known. I have long been a fan of historical fiction. It has been one of my favorite genres for the vast majority of my reading life and I have really been enjoying Enjoying World War II fiction over the last couple of years and this is probably my favorite one that I've read second maybe only to The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak because this story was just absolutely exquisite in every possible way if you cannot guess I gave it five out of five stars so one of the things that is so wonderful about this book is the fact that this is really about the women's war that was fought. Obviously there are a lot of historical fiction stories that are written about the things that men did in fighting for the freedom of their countries and things like that, but a lot of times we forget in reading those stories that the women that were staying at home waiting for their husbands and their brothers and their sons to return were fighting a completely different kind of war that in some respects was even more difficult than the things that the men that they loved were experiencing and this book really just shines a light on that. It shines a light on both just the general things that women had to do to survive as their towns were overrun by Nazis and things like that, but it also shines a light on the efforts that the women made to help their causes throughout the war and one of the things that is mentioned repeatedly throughout the story is that the Nazis won't expect a woman to be doing the things that some of the characters in this book are doing, that they won't expect a woman to be making such strides to help the resistance and things like that and it really shows how the Nazis underestimated the women that were in France and the women that were in the different countries that they were occupying and it shows the resiliency that women have and the ways that they are able to adapt and change and shift in order to protect the ones that they love. As you guys know I am a character driven reader and this book had so many different things going for it including really excellent pacing, really excellent plot, things like that, but what absolutely made it for me was the characters. Like I mentioned we follow two sisters, Vianne and Isabel, who are living in Nazi occupied France. Vianne, the older sister, decides to stay in her home with her daughter Sophie and try to live life as normally as possible as she can while her town is being occupied by Nazis. And Vianne is a much more demure, sort of calm, quiet, submissive person, whereas Isabel, the younger sister, the one who goes to join the French resistance, is this almost hothead sort of outspoken, very rebellious kind of character and so in a lot of respects the two sisters are just complete opposites and so they come at the war and the positions that they're in from very different perspectives. They clash on a lot of their different thoughts on what should be done about the Nazi occupation and how France should be responding to the situation and what they as individuals should be doing to help the French resistance. And I loved how though these characters are very very different from each other they are both so well-rounded and how their relationship grew from this sort of clashing that they have at the very beginning, this intense fight about the different ways that they should approach the war and how as the two sisters go through the war, as they both experience different things and witness different atrocities, how they in many respects come to see the other's perspective, how they begin to see that there are more sides to this war than just the thing that they're experiencing and not everything about the situation is this black and white thing. And the book starts off with a quote that really just sums up the whole story, which is, in love we find out who we want to be and in war we find out who we are. And you see that theme repeated throughout the story. You see how different loving relationships change the characters and how they are able to be the person that they want to be, but then as they're put in these different situations with the war, they have to make these choices about the kind of person that they are. And it poses a lot of different questions for the reader to sort of consider, like, if you were in that situation, how far would you be willing to go to protect yourself? How far would you be willing to go to protect your family and the ones that you love? What kind of moral stances are you going to sort of put a stake in the ground and say, no, I won't go this far? What kinds of emotional and physical pain are you willing to put yourself through in order to protect your children and your spouse and your friends and your family? And just so many different questions that I don't know that I've ever really considered for myself. I've never really thought about 
what I would do if I was put in that situation where an enemy was living under my roof and my every move was watched and if I did or said the wrong thing myself or my children or my neighbors could be killed and it's just it causes you to think about so many different things and I just I was I ugly cried through a lot of this book. I stayed up till 2 a.m. to finish the story because everything about it was so completely compelling. And when you hear the story initially, when you think, okay, one sister joins the resistance and one stays at home, you would think that by default, the story of the sister that joins the resistance would just be far more compelling, but that was not the case at all. They were both individually really, really compelling stories, and I just really, really loved both of the sisters and the stories that they had to tell and how everything weaved together. The pacing of the story was really fantastic. I started the book a little bit slowly, but that wasn't because the pacing was slow, it was just because life was a little bit crazy for me, and so I was only able to read, uh, you know, 30 or 40 pages at a time or whatever and didn't really get into the story until a few days into it but once I hit like page 150 or so I was 100% hooked had a hard time putting it down and ultimately wound up staying up until 2 a.m. to finish the book and ugly crying and it was just it was a beautiful beautiful story with so many wonderful themes and questions to think about incredible wonderful characters beautiful stories and I found out after the fact that the character of Isabel is actually based on a real person who did work for the resistance in the war and I love when stories are based on the true actions of other people and I just I love I love this book and I will without a doubt be rereading it I'm sure many many times in the years to come and if you are a historical fiction fan particularly if you are a World War II historical fiction fan and if you have not read many books that sort of address this issue of like the women's war and sort of come at it from this perspective I would highly highly recommend you check this out. Once again gave it five out of five stars loved everything about it. Well, there you have it friends those are my thoughts on the nightingale by Kristen Hanna if you have read the book I would love to hear your thoughts as well so please let me know in the comments if you want to follow me elsewhere online you can find me on Twitter Instagram and Goodreads all at Sarah Ann Hayes the links for those profiles will be in the description below thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time bye and um, and how the different um, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Bye-bye.